So we all know how enjoyable keeping reptiles and amphibians is. We love our hobby, it's fantastic. But one of the truly magical experiences someone can have is breeding them. Now that comes with pros and cons, but there's something to be said about the magic it is to come to an incubation container and find a hatchling or many hatchlings. It's just such I, I don't know how to explain it. If you know, you know it. It's just phenomenal. So in today's video, I'm extremely excited to share with you all that we are going to be taking a look at all of this season's baby crested geckos and lichianus geckos. If that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely keep watching. And for those of you that don't know, my name is Dion. I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging the little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future your uploads. Thanks guys. And right now we actually have a newly hatched clutch from Nona. So let's go over to the shelf and take a look at these adorable little geckos. Oh man guys, these geckos look amazing everybody. Let's get over to the desk, have a closer look at the babies, and we'll set them up in their future enclosures. Okay, everyone, these are Nona's eggs. They were laid on August 20th. Look at how beautiful these animals are. They look incredible. Oh man, I'm so excited to raise these beautiful babies. Hey, where are you going? Hello, how are you? All right, let's get them in their enclosures, shall we? friends so these are all of the babies you can see we have 11 crested geckos but we now have 13 because we're adding the two new ones that just hatched from nona and then here you can see that we have two four five babies from this year lychees and then we have a sixth one down at the bottom here which is actually the one that we held back because you guys asked me to keep one back from the very end of last year so let's go ahead now and bring these animals out and see all of them see what they look like how they're doing maybe try and feed a few of them all right everybody so here we have the first clutch of pingu's babies and if you remember both of these animals are lily whites they both hatch as lily whites, and it's gonna be really cool to show you guys how much they've changed over time. Cause a lot of you were also saying, how can you tell these are lily whites? And I had mentioned that over time, it'll become a lot more obvious. Now at the size they're at, you can 100% tell that these little babies are lily whites. Check them out. Look at this one. You can see some incredible coloration developing. Very clean animal, it just looks so nice. And the best part about them is they're pretty tame. I mean, I do a lot of handling with these guys, so they're relatively chill. I mean, I could probably tongue feed one a cricket right now. Want a cricket? <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, they're pretty chill and uh, definitely doing so awesome. Mm, mm mm how is that? Now here's the clutch mate, the other lily white. And you can see that they're just snoozing in the leaves over here. If you recall, crested geckos don't have eyelids. They have a clear scale over their eye. So their eyes kind of just sink in when they're not awake. So we'll go ahead and take them out for our, you guys to see now. Hi, little friend. You all right? I know you were sleeping, I'm sorry. Now this one, I think, I really like this one. I mean, I like both of them, but this one's pretty cool. 
I believe to be male. Um, they're around that age where you can start sexing them. They will exhibit femoral pores between around uh, 8 to 12 grams. You can start seeing the males with femoral pores. But this one is definitely showing some pores. If you look closely, you can already see them there. So this one is already a male. Well, an obvious male was always a male. Hey you, where are you going? So we have one male lily. It's kind of cool that this is, you know, the first baby that's actually sexable. So I'm excited. It's a really cute little guy. Okay friends, so here is Pingu's second clutch of babies. These ones are really interesting. Uh, both of them are not lily whites, but they have some really nice pattern developing and their dorsal striping, like the pin striping looks pretty defined. So I really like the look of them. They have like a nice base color. Hello. You can already see there's, you know, a bit of a size difference there between these ones and the last clutch. So there's one of them. And then here's the clutch mate. It's looking great. You can see if they'd like a cricket. Hi buddy. You want a cricket? There you go. And this one, of course, also has really cool pinstriping. So yeah, that's the second clutch. They look really nice. So here's clutch number three. And we already see one of them is up near the front. And these were another really nice group of Cresties that are not Lily Whites. But look at them. They look so good. Little acrobat. The second baby is hiding in the foliage here. And again, their dorsal pinning looks really cool. <laughs> Off they go. Gonna drop in a little cricket for them if they want to eat it. They'll get a lot more food than that later, but just a little snack. Now, Pingu's fourth clutch is an interesting one because this clutch had one baby that isn't a lily white, but boy, do I really like this one. And then one clutch mate that was. Hello. Yeah, they're really, really nice looking. So we have this really beautiful baby. Hey. <laughs> and the sibling over here is a really nice little lily white again and this one looks great i'm pretty excited to see how it develops it's a lovely little lily white it's funny i'm surprised how clean these lilies are coming out considering their father rambo does have some dalmatian spotting i don't think any of the lilies I've produced this year have any spots on them, which is a good thing because I think a lot of people want a very clean lily white. So yeah, but that's this one. Ah, it looks great. It's such a beautiful little gecko. So friends, this is the last clutch that is hatched from Pingus. And this was another lucky full clutch of lily whites. Look at this beautiful little baby. Hello there. This one looks really good too. Honestly, I just feel like so thrilled whether they're lily whites or not. Hello, little one. Really, really, really nice baby. And then the sibling looks quite similarly, of course. Hanging out. Hi, can I pick you up? You don't mind? Just like that. Another beautiful lily white. So it's pretty cool. I've actually produced five Lily Whites this season so far, and we still have three clutches of eggs from Pingu that have yet to hatch. So very exciting stuff. Pingu's done amazing for her first season, and I hope you liked seeing her babies. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at Nona's babies. And I gotta say, I mean, you've seen two of them now because they just hatched, but they look really good. So guys, you may recall that Nona had a really rough season. I had a few infertile eggs to start. I had that clutch where I accidentally made a baby hatch and then the clutch mate to that baby 
never hatched. Then I got another clutch with only one baby that hatched. It was just really weird. But this is her first baby to actually hatch for me. And look how nice it is. Careful, baby. Look at this baby. I mean, it's fired down right now, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one develops. It looks a lot like her too, which is pretty wholesome. Yeah, it's just a really, really cute gecko. Nice full pin, beautiful markings. So this is the oldest of three babies that we got from her this season. That's all we got. We have no more eggs. Her last clutch was unfortunately infertile. So yeah, rough season for Nona. First season, so you know, I'm not too concerned. But at the very least, we have this beautiful baby. And then of course we have the two that we started the video with that are its younger siblings that also look so nice. So considering all things, she did well. She produced some really, really nice babies. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at all the lychees. Okay, everybody. So hopefully some of you remember that you all wanted me to hold back one of last year's babies. This is just at the very end of the year, one of them. Uh, there was one last clutch that was pretty late. And so this is that baby. Now, I did keep this one back because it was kind of struggling to eat at first. But now it's really putting on weight and eating a lot and growing. So I'm much less worried or concerned about them. But as you can see, they are a beautiful gecko. Lovely lychee. Nice markings, too. <laughs> Lychees are pretty messy, I gotta say. Like, I mean, they're rummaging around. They poop everywhere. They're an interesting gecko. Like, they're they're pretty easy to take care of, but they are messy. We'll, we'll raise this one a bit longer. I'm still not really sure what I'm gonna do because I can't just have all these lychees that are Jabba and Leela's babies. I probably will eventually sell this baby. I mean, I should say juvenile at this point, but... Yeah, they're they're really nice looking. So I'm happy to, uh, I guess, have the experience of raising one of their offspring. Because, like I said, I never really keep them past a certain point. Because there's always somebody who's wanting to buy them as soon as I offer them. So keeping one back has been fun. Oof. So that's that one. Now here is one of this year's babies. Uh, it's one of the most recent ones. You can see that it's fired down, but there's some really nice kind of pinkish undertones. It's really hard to see when they're fired down. Nonetheless, it's a beautiful animal, putting on some size now. And the sibling I actually sold to one of my subscribers or viewers. A lovely couple that bought them, and they're doing really well. So I don't have the clutch mate to this baby because it's gone to a lovely home already. Next, we have clutch number two for this year, which, as you can see, hatched September 6th. So they're not too big yet. Here's one of them doing a good job camouflaging on their cork. Lovely animal, as you can see. And then the second one happens to be, I don't know why, up in this corner. Hello there. How's it going, baby? These ones are a bit more fired up, so you can see a lot more pattern on them. They're quite cute. Now, some of them will have a bit of a wavy tail when they're born for like the first month or so. I find that this very quickly corrects itself as soon as they start eating quite well. And these ones are starting to eat really well, so tail wave goes away very quickly. Okay, go ahead. Sorry I bugged you. It never wants to let go. That's the funny thing. That's why I call them finger geckos. Wonderful. And then we have the last clutch, which was only born a few days ago. These babies are over here. And despite how teeny tiny they are in contrast, as you can see, it's so cool to think that like lychees actually hatch this big, if you really think about it. It's, and I can only imagine with larger localities, but that's a big baby gecko, you know? It always blows my mind every time. So fun. So there's, what? Where are you going? There's one baby. Go ahead, buddy. Sorry. 
Sorry to have disturbed you. And the sibling is snoozing under here. I guess that cork and foliage isn't good enough for them. They, they want it to be a bit more creative and sleep under their paper towel. Some of the crusties do this too, so. But yeah, friends, so there you have it. Those are all the babies I've produced so far this year. It's just been a lot of fun documenting everything and sharing the whole experience with you all. So I sincerely hope you enjoyed seeing these babies. For those of you considering breeding reptiles, do keep in mind that this involves a lot of work. I spend hours a week cleaning all of these containers out, providing these babies with food and nourishment, and monitoring their progress, their weight, ensuring that they're eating. It's a ton of work and it can be so rewarding, but do consider that before going out and buying a few different animals and trying to breed them. There's a commitment involved and sometimes the money you get in return helps you break even. Don't look at it as some opportunity to get rich or anything like that. You should do it out of a passion and love for the animals and consider the responsibility involved with producing animals, finding them good loving homes and such. Lots to consider. So please do think about these things before deciding to breed animals. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, what were your accomplishments this year as far as breeding reptiles? Are you someone who subscribed, who's breeding reptiles this season? And what was the most exciting thing you produced? I've asked this question before, but let me know again. If you're not breeding animals, what is the dream species that you could or would want to breed? That way you get a chance to answer the question too. Let me know in the comment section down below, everybody. As always, I'll give you a comment at heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. For me, I'm so thrilled that I've been producing crocodile skinks. And of course the cresties and lychees. It's been wonderful and I mean, it's such a blessing to be able to breed animals and have success with it and enjoy all the babies. Awesome. Well everybody, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed seeing an update on all of this season's New Caledonian babies. It's been really fun sharing that with you all and it's been a great experience raising them all. It kind of takes me back to when I used to breed a lot of crested geckos and it is a lot of work. I mean, that's just two females worth of crested geckos and a pair of lychees, quite a few babies and a few more clutches yet to hatch so as always before we end the video i want to take a quick moment to sincerely thank my patreon supporters you guys are so wonderful i'm so appreciative of the support that you offer to reptiliatus channel in addition to your viewership and support guys if you want to learn about what benefits there are to becoming a Patreon supporter, you can check out the link down below where you can learn about perks, the sneak peeks, the thank you cards, and more. You can become a Patreon member for as little as $2 a month for the starting tier. And today we are going to thank my newest patron over on Patreon, Lillian. Lillian, thank you so much for becoming my newest patron. Really look forward to being connected on that platform and getting to know you better. Thanks, guys. All right, everyone, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please let me know what you thought about it down below. And if you did enjoy the video, it would mean a lot to me if you could give it a thumbs up. It does really help push the video further, telling the algorithm that people are enjoying the content. So, you know, honest opinions, let me know. But yeah, I look forward to seeing you all in another video again soon. If you want to see more videos pertaining to geckos, check out my gecko playlist up above. See you guys.